A lot of the LSAT programs put sufficient assumption questions and necessary assumption questions in one category, assumption questions. That's wrong. Let me make it clear. These two question types are very different, okay? We cannot put them in one category. The task that we have in sufficient assumption is very different from necessary assumption, okay? They might have that common word assumption in them and it is related to the assumption that we have in the argument um, and related to the conclusion, but, but just because of that word, we cannot put them in one category. You know, the task is so different that, and then the information that we're looking for is so different that we have to deal with them as two separate independent questions, okay? In sufficient assumption questions, we have to look for the information, we have to look for, or we have to actually predict, we have to look for the answer choice that guarantees the conclusion. It makes the conclusion 100% strong, okay? It, not just strong, but establishes it. It's even stronger than the strengthened question, right? In strengthened questions, we were looking for answer choice that strengthens the conclusion, and if this answer choice, which does even a little bit of improvement, it does the job, that's not the case in a sufficient assumption question. It's way more stronger than that. We have to make sure that the answer to us proves that this conclusion is going to happen, okay? And if it doesn't, if there's an answer to us that doesn't show that, it is not sufficient assumption question answer to us, okay? Now, that's not the case in necessary assumption. Necessary assumption question is, is, is different from sufficient assumption. In necessary assumption question, we don't have to guarantee the conclusion, right? Let me tell you what is happening in necessary assumption question. There is the assumption that author has already made, okay? In necessary assumption question, it is the assumption that author has already made to, to justify author's conclusion, okay? It's like some weak information, um, something that, that has to be true for the conclusion to be valid, barely valid, and it's assumption that author has already made and you go to the answer choices and see which one it is. It already exists. But that's not the case in sufficient assumption. In sufficient assumption questions, we have to create assumption. We, the reader, the student, has to find the answer choice and assume that it's true. It's not something that author assumes. No. We're actually helping author guarantee the conclusion. Okay? That's why we call it sufficient, that it's enough to justify the conclusion. Okay? It's something that we help author with to justify that conclusion. Whereas a necessary assumption is something author has already assumed. Author thinks it's necessary for the conclusion to be valid. We go to the answer choices and see what author has already assumed. We just identify it. We're not creating something. We're just identifying it, bringing it to the students, and then uh, just you know seeing how it's something that author has assumed. Okay? We'll go much into detail but the point of this video is to make it clear to you that these two questions are different, the task is different, and you should never ever confuse them. And it starts with correctly identifying them, okay? Now, let me make it much more clear. Let me really like, help you visualize uh, how these questions are different, okay? Let's say we have a scale uh, zero to 100, zero in the bottom, 100 on the top. And then let's say we have this one line in the middle, it's like at 50%, okay? So 0% scale goes up, 50% goes further, 100%, right? I'll use the fish example again. Um, so let's say to survive, the fish must have you know 50% of health. It should be right in the middle, 50%, right? If, if that oxygen level or whatever it is in the water goes below 50%, if it comes to like 49, if it comes to 49, then fish dies, okay? It's right on the middle, 50%, and it's barely surviving there, right? We have zero at the bottom. But if that oxygen level or whatever that thing is in the water that fish needs to survive, it goes to 100%, then it's actually really good for fish. It's strong, it's healthy, it's muscular, you know, it's a lot of meat. It's good for the fish, okay? Now, bring that thing, let's bring that thing to necessary and sufficient assumption. Okay, let's say, let's assume that this fish is actually the conclusion of the argument. Okay, this at 50%, the fish that's barely surviving is our conclusion. Okay, and now with what's between 0 and 50%, that thing that it needs to just barely survive is actually a necessary assumption. 
Okay? Necessary assumption is something that holds the conclusion to the point where it's just barely surviving. Basically the way the way it is in original um, form. All right? And if there's anything that's above 50% that makes it stronger, makes the conclusion stronger, and brings it all the way to 100%, that gap from 50 to 100% is our sufficient assumption. Okay? So 0 to 50%, we have necessary assumption that's holding the conclusion, just barely surviving. If it gets, if we take out the necessary assumption, it falls, it dies, it crashes. But if we try to make it stronger, take it to the 100%, then we bring in the sufficient assumption which takes it to the 100%. Okay? Totally different function. Now, Stressif asked me, is it possible to just have sufficient assumption but not necessary? Because sufficient assumption brings it to 100%, right? Is it possible to not have sufficient and uh, not have necessary, um, just have sufficient assumption which makes it 100%, okay? Now, technically, no, okay? Now, it seems visually, yes, If we, why do we need that one pillar that brings it just to 50% if we have a pillar or support that brings it to 100%? It does make sense that way. But technically, it's, it's not necessary that necessary assumption is same as sufficient assumption. The sufficient assumption that you're bringing in to bring it to 100% might be the piece of information which is totally different from this 0 to 50%, which is necessary, okay? There are like million necessary assumptions for some arguments. That really is the case. Uh, for example, me to be able to record this right now, there are so many things that need to be true. There are so many things that are necessary. Um, this camera should be working. I should be able to breathe, talk, sit here. You know, the world is not falling apart. Like so many things are necessary for me to be just able to record this right now, right? So, so many things can be necessary, uh, have to be necessary, and therefore just having sufficient assumption is not enough. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that we can just get rid of necessary assumption. Necessary ones are always required, okay? Furthermore, you will not have to deal with these two assumptions in one question, never, okay? The questioner will either just ask necessary assumption or ask sufficient assumption, okay? They will never ask you to deal with both in one question. So you don't have to worry about comparing that. That was a bit more complex, advanced, something that I won't share if you're wondering. Uh, just focus on this. Necessary assumption is the assumption author has already made. I will try to predict it. If I can predict it, well and good, if not, We'll go and see um, how how it helps us, uh, you know, find the answer to that author needs. And sufficient assumption is something that we author doesn't make; we make um, to help the author. 